Hi, this is Leanne Horbrick from Dutchess County BOCES, the CTI program. I'm here to talk to you about Boxville calculations. One of the first things that you learn in an electrical class is choosing the size of the box. There are both metal boxes and non-metallic boxes basically made of PVC. Over the past few weeks, you've been working with them in the classroom, but do you know how to calculate exactly what is allowed to be within that box? So when you open up your code book, there are two tables that will help you with this. The two tables are tables 314.16a and 31416b. I put the outline for 31416a on top here. Basically, you'll see the box trade size, the minimum volume allowed, and the maximum number of conductors. So you would basically use that if you're using all number 12 conductors, let's say. You're using four number 12 conductors. You would go down, find number 12, find the number four, and then read to the left to see what size box you need. What I really want to talk about today is the second table. 31416B, and I pretty much drew most of the table out for you here. It starts at size 18AWG and goes down to number six. Well, for the most part, if you're working in residential, you will use size 14 or size 12. I did leave the millimeters out and I only circled inches cubed. So most of the residential work you will do will be either 14 or 12. So these two numbers are the two that really become important. Every conductor that is size 14 will take up two cubic inches of space. Every conductor that is size 12 will take up 2.25 cubic inches of space. So if you're working inside a box and you're looking to put four conductors in that are, let's say, size 12, the amount of volume just for the conductors, so if you're using four size 12, it would be 2. 2, 5 times 4 to figure out how much space is being taken up just by that. 2.25 times 4. Um, quickest way to do this is think of it as money. 2 times 4 is $8. 25 cents 4 times is another dollar. So this would be 9 cubic inches of space just for the four size 12 conductors. So what I have for you on the side over here is I drew an example of a box for us to look at. So I'm going to, oh, before I go to that box, but what do we actually put into the box? So I have another list over here for you of what exactly goes into the box. And in that box, you will find things such as your conductors. Every conductor, each conductor counts, so we're going to write the word count up here, counts one time. Well, you now have to use grounds. The grounds automatically come in the Romex. If you peel back a Romex, you will see there are three pieces of wire in there, a black, a white, and a bare wire. The bare colored wire, or the one with no covering, is the ground. No matter how many grounds you have in there, the grounds count only once. So your grounds count once. You pick the larger, pick the largest ground. So pick the largest 
ground. You'll have some internal clamps, whether you have one internal clamp, two internal clamps, or however many, no matter how many internal clamps you have, together all of the internal clamps count just one time. So your internal clamps count just time, one time. If you use wire nuts to bring the three hot wires together and tighten them and the three neutral to tighten them and the three grounds to tighten them, if you're using any type of wire nut, they don't count at all. So do not count your wire nuts. So wire nuts count zero. They're there just to hold the wires together and a piggy tail. Um, for you. And the last thing that you have is the actual device. You have this box, what are you using it for? Are you going to use it to install a switch, um, an outlet, a duplex, whatever item, whatever device you are going to put in that box, every device counts as two. So your devices count twice. So devices count twice. So that's a typical box, what you would have inside. So now, over here on the other side, I have an example for us to work through. I have a picture of an outlet here, and this outlet is being, and the outlet is being made, excuse me, I'm really sorry about that. I get this a little bit closer to that picture. So this particular outlet has um, an outlet put inside it. So in this out box, we're going to put an outlet. You can see there's a Romex coming in from the bottom, uh, two going out on the top, and for residential, 14 is a very common wire size, so I've chosen to use size 14. I do have an internal clamp, a couple of wire nuts in there, and now I need to know what size box can I use to put everything inside where the wires are not overcrowded, because if they're overcrowded, we can end up um, causing damage to the coverings on the conductors. And if it's too tight, we can cause overheating. So we need to be sure that our calculations make sense, that they work, and they fit the NEC code. So when I go looking at this, one of the first things I did notice is one, two, three Romex. So how many conductors do we count from those three Romex? So I need to figure out how many conductors there are. And we do not count the ground in these conductors. So a hot and a neutral, a hot and a neutral. So there's one, two, three, four, another hot and another neutral is six. So this gives us a count of six right now. Next thing I look at is, well, I do have the three grounds, but we only count the grounds once. You pick whatever is the largest AWG. So for the grounds, or the grounding wires, all together, there's three, but we count it only once. So that's going to be one. What else do I have? Well. It says here there's an internal clamp. We don't worry about the outside. Anything outside does not affect the volume inside. So we have one clamp, and I check my little list over here, and clamps count as one. Whether I have one clamp, two clamps, three clamps, the clamps always just count collectively as one. So I have clamp is one. And then I probably have a few wire nuts. We don't count those. But I have the actual device itself, the outlet. 
all devices count twice and you use whatever conductor wire size you have. So in this case, we're using size 14. So I'm going to write down outlet for my device. And this counts twice. So how many items or pieces do I have to actually account for inside this box? Six, seven, eight, and two more is 10. So I have 10 all together. Now, I still haven't figured out the volume. I go to table 314B, go to number 14, and I'm looking at the cubic inches. And over here, the cubic inches says two cubic inches per conductor. So I do 10 times two, and I have 20 cubic inches. So when I choose my non-metallic box, I need to choose one that has more space than 20 cubic inches. If I pick 20, it's too tight. It needs to allow a little extra space. So I need to go whatever size is larger than 20 cubic inches. Don't necessarily need a, a you know, a two gang or a three gang, you know, really, large ones with a lot of volume. I'm not looking for something 50 cubic inches. I'm just looking for something that's large enough to hold 20 cubic inches with a little more space. I hope you find this helpful. Have a good day.